All right, I'm in Photo P. I'm on my sketch layer. I'm using a brush that is pressure sensitive. I have smoothing down to zero. I may have my opacity pretty low. And my brush is about 85 pixels on an 11 by 14 by 350 pixel per inch canvas. And I start with the cranium. I want to be on my sketch layer. I find kind of the eye line. And then the mandible. And I've already sketched it in pencil. I don't need to sketch it again digitally. I'm just showing you how you can do all of this all in the computer, should you want to. Right? And the important thing for sketching is not to be too detail-oriented. It's to really just try to refine your shapes and play with that silhouette shape. Cranium, eye line, big mouth, fun hair. Now the way I do hair like this, when I sketch, I use circles, I use rectangles, I use triangles. Sometimes I use wedge shapes, which are like triangles with the head cut off. But when you're doing complex shapes, I'll often do a bigger oval like that, and then I'll cut out of it with triangles. And it's especially good to build your, your concepts with basic shapes when they're made to be repeated. So if it's for like a character design, kind of like what this concept is, like the idea is this will just be a little sticker or a t-shirt, but it could suggest a whole larger story and more characters and continuing adventures of me and my Gregorius Gorgon, Gregarious Gorgon. Gregarious means likes to be around people. So you just sketch, you know, and then you can kind of increase your opacity and refine as you go. Again, being mindful of containing shapes as much as possible. And it's the silhouette that matters. I don't know if I'm totally... Yes, I, so it's fine not to contain them. It will make coloring harder. And it's a good learning lesson, but if you can just be mindful to contain them, you'll be happier later. <laughs> it's also why I wanted like Disney stuff, but I never really liked it. Obviously, Disney stuff is like more simple than the Yeah. Because it's much harder than coloring. Yeah. It's true. So in the digital inking is when I'm really mindful of, of really containing everything. So now let's move on to digital inking. This is, again, I'll remind you, under image size, 11 by 14 by 350. 11 by 14 inches by 350 pixels per inch. So now I'm going to bring my sketch onto there, just like I did it digitally. And then, just like I did it digitally and I kept it at a low opacity, I'm going to onion skin this by taking it down to about 50%. And then I'm going to lock both of these. So whether you sketch digitally, whether you sketch by hand, lock them on a blank white background that's also locked. And now I'm going to do my digital inking layer. So, And this professionally is called line art. Because right. sometimes you can get paid just to, to illustrate line art. Someone else might color it, like you would do for a coloring book. Or if you work in comics, there's one person that gets paid to pencil, one person that gets paid to ink, one person that gets paid to color. Or sometimes like a whole studio of people that get paid to color. Yeah. And then there's a letterer. There's just all kinds of different specialized digital jobs now. Okay, how is your inked line art different than your sketch? It's the same brush. It's 100% hard. It's about the same size. It's still pressure sensitive. The opacity, though, is going to be 100% opacity, like solid black ink. And it's not going to be blue. It's going to be default black, you know, the deepest black. 
there is. Now, the smooth you're going to experiment with and take some time to get the brush where you want it. So that doesn't work. I need to make it pressure sensitive. Right. Now, if the smooth is too high, it's going to slow down the strokes that you make. So I'm going to take the smooth down maybe to about 20. And then it keeps up with me pretty well. And it still looks pretty clean. All right. Now, I got to figure out the size. I might go a little bit smaller. That's too small. <laughs> and because I want something that's more animated looking, maybe I don't want to have it set where it's pressure sensitive. This is what's called a fixed line weight. So you get to decide, but find the right line weight. Now, honestly, if you have a fixed line weight, because we're using photo P, you can take your smoothness up a little bit without as much lag because it's not as complicated, right? And now it just forces me to slow down a little bit. And it smooths it as I go. Especially for big curbs, it's really nice to have that smooth tool. And this isn't a logo. This does not need to be perfect shapes. We are not going for perfection here. We're just going for clear line art. There's people that tend to have sketchy lines. Oh, messed that one up. Command Z. And there are people that tend to have what are called animators lines in the industry. Because for inking, it's all about really smooth lines and kind of completing them all the way. It's trying to finish it off as you go. But especially with curves, once you get to certain angles, you might have to stop and start again. The smoothing can also make tight turns like this a little tricky. Especially on these big curves, it's nice to have it. And instead of just trying to fix a little part, I'll just do Command Z and I'll start again. You take a deep breath. In South Korea, where they have a huge animation industry, calligraphy is taught from very early ages using, you know, brush, horsehair brushes loaded with sumi ink. And they practice like breath control to make the, the kanji characters really smooth and clear in as few strokes as possible. That is perfect training for being an animation inker. Does not mean it's the only way you can do line art. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the characters are just kanji, you know, for all the languages. Yeah, you use, use them for different different vocabularies for the different languages. And then there are individual script characters as well, right? There's a lot to learn for those languages. But I, I mentioned Korea because that's where almost all refined animation cleanup happens if it's hand done, which is where you still, even I say hand done, it's done by an artist, but it's done digitally. All the in-betweens for our television animation, for instance. 
And then digital animation doesn't have outlines, doesn't have digital inking because they're 3D models. And all the edges are, are done with the, uh, the model itself. And then we saw with your presentations that programs like Blender have options in them to create outlines around 3D models. So there's a lot of versatility in the art form. But this is just old school kind of clean inking. And I'm using a fixed line width just so it really looks like animation. Animation uses a fixed line width so it's so easy to match frame to frame. Whereas comic books tend to use a varied line width because it depends on the style of the inker. And even though I have a fixed line weight, it doesn't mean that I can't double up the line sometimes if I want to. And there's going to be little times when you overshoot your line. That happens all the time. Yep, you can definitely do Command Z, Control Z on a PC. And we're also going to turn these, I'm going to show you how we can use Adobe Illustrator, even though it's not freeware, to turn these into vectors, which gives us even more control of cleaning it up. And I just try to do as much with a single pass as I can. And notice how each shape is pretty contained. Not leaving any open-ended shapes. These are some lines for highlights later and shadows. And then you can always make different decisions with your with your digital inking than you made with your your sketch, right? I can take my lasso tool and I can just cut and delete. This is my only unlocked layer, right? And then I might decide to ink that section a different way with my pen tool. Different than what I drew. Nope, don't like it. Nope. <laughs> this is why I sketch by hand. I like to erase a lot. You're saying you fill in your property area in Metro? Well, it's not my intellectual property because I created it as an employee. But, but you made him? Yeah. That's cool. Not to be the mascot, but... It, then people wanted it to be the mascot, so it was just for a stair stepping campaign. Get people to use the stairs more. <laughs> yep, there you go. That would work. For his health. And Nico is a health nut. No, but it's kind of cool if you create something and then like it turns into a suit that someone wears, you know? It's, it's a unique experience. But what is funny, like it's shown me that once you do something for a client, you really do lose control of it, right? Yeah. Like all the different variations. 
my my most popular work in terms of sales is this 